All right, everybody, 6.35 it is. Let's uh, get started here. Bridger Lankfer is a volunteer with the Recall Jen Campbell campaign. He's welcoming about 90 people to a virtual organizing meeting. We want community-based policymaking at, at the city. We want our voices to be heard. We want to, to govern our own city and not be governed by these special interests. Recall campaigns are rarely successful, and the pandemic will make this one all the more difficult. But the group is motivated by what they see as Campbell's failure to represent their interests. We live in a coastal community that has been taken over by short-term vacation rentals. Point Loma resident Mandy Havlick says she joined the campaign when Campbell announced her proposal to legalize and regulate short-term home rentals, popularized by Airbnb. The proposal was approved by the council Wednesday and is expected to significantly reduce the overall number of short-term rental listings in San Diego. Most of the city's elected officials called it a good compromise, but Havlick says it was crafted by special interests, not the community. And they need to ban them. That is my compromise. Uh, that's uh, I'm not willing to compromise on that because, again, you're saying that this industry is going to be put on the backs of people who are in need of housing. And that's going to impact our community little by little when the families can't, you know, the school populace goes down because there's no families in the neighborhood. Campbell says she's been discussing this thorny issue with constituents since before she was elected to her seat in 2018, and that community input played a big role in her proposal. So it was a lot of collaboration, a lot of compromise, a lot of working together over at least a three-year period, and included the community all the way along. Campbell adds a special recall election would cost taxpayers up to $2 million, a high price, she says, when she's up for re-election next year. Uh, the people behind this are um, uh, people who disagree with me uh, on certain issues or politically, and uh, what they need to do is get themselves together for the next campaign and vote for whomever they want. Campbell's stance on short-term rentals is not the only issue driving the recall effort. Maybe it's unconscious racism, but it is racism, and people need to call it out for what it is. Tasha Williamson is an activist who lives outside District 2 in southeast San Diego. She was outraged when a slim majority of Campbell's colleagues chose her to become city council president. Councilmember Monica Montgomery Stepp also sought the post and said she would use it to advance racial equity, especially in policing. Williamson says Campbell is holding back police reforms. And Jen Campbell has showed us in every instance that she is against um, our right uh, to have a police department um, that is just and moral. Um, that provides uh, non-biased policing. Campbell says she spent a lifetime advocating for equality and has evolved on policing issues. For example, she initially backed the police's right to use the carotid restraint, or sleeper hold. But after last year's racial justice protests, she agreed it should be banned. I did not realize that the police departments were using it incorrectly, and they were choking people, and I didn't realize that. So I opened my eyes and I learned new information and I changed my mind. But Williamson says the community's problems with Campbell run deeper than her stance on a few specific issues. So she has actually brought people together that would not normally be together to recall her because she has refused to listen to her constituents all over this city and she has been disrespectful to constituents of color. To force a vote on the recall, the campaign needs to gather more than 14,000 valid signatures from District 2 voters by June 2nd. Campaigns like this often rely on paid signature gatherers, but the recall effort doesn't have major financial backers, so most of the work will have to come from volunteers. Andrew Bowen, KPBS News.